Hey there guys, welcome back to Hursty Games and welcome back to our QPR career mode. If you're not all nice and caught up, then make sure you go check out the playlist, get yourself caught up, and then of course, welcome to today's episode. Today, we are about to go into the January transfer window, one of the biggest parts of this season and we've got plenty to do plenty to look at plenty of options if uh, you did watch the last episode you know there's a couple of things i've set up in preparation for the january transfer window we're not going to be spending much potentially if any money unless players make their way out of the club but i think personally the main thing we're going to be looking at are potentially a few free agents to pick up or people to get on pre-contract for next season i said at the start if we could get ourselves into a position of looking likely to go up in into the Prem, which we are at the moment, we're comfortably top of the table, you know, sat there with like eight points clear. Uh, well, actually, no, we're 12 points clear. Tom, do your maths, mate. But we are, we're sitting pretty comfortably up there. We're looking pretty gosh darn good at the moment. And I think it allows us to maybe start thinking about some, again, like pre-contract signings for next season. I think it gives us a bit of freedom. To sign players now that would be suitable for us in the Prem, I think is unrealistic. But to get pre-contracts for people that might be then joining us in the Premier League, I think that makes a little bit more sense. That's something that we can do. First of all, we do have this game up against Huddersfield to get through. I do have a few people um, that I have started scouting that have been suggested in some of the comments. And uh, yeah, we'll obviously look at those come the start of January. Also want to just address very quickly, Sinclair Armstrong was included in the latest squad update from EA. So any um, career mode started from, I think it was like the 1st of November onwards, you will get Sinclair Armstrong in your team. Obviously, sadly, I started this before then, so we get no Sinclair Armstrong, which sucks. It, I'm happy he's in the game. I want him to be an ultimate team, please, as well, EA, but it sucks that so we're not going to be able to add Armstrong to our career mode. But regardless, we've got the team we've got Let's crack on. Okay, going into our first game of the episode, away from home against Huddersfield. Now, this is a tough one at the moment because our squad fitness is, is pretty low on quite a few players. Most of them are our rotation players. So, Ilias Chair is dropping to the bench for Leko because Chair is the only starting 11 player outside of Pal, who's quite tired. Obviously, left-back options, we have Pal and then Hammerlinen, or we have the rotation of Aussie. Hammerline and somebody I'll use if, for example, an injury was to come up. But I think, and it's been said in the comment section, fullback is a position to look at for next season. And I agree, especially when Laird does end up moving on, unless we can pick Laird back up. It is probably going to be a position that we need to uh, strengthen in regard to numbers at the very least. But Leko being the only change in the starting 11, Powell probably will make his way off at some point. Ozzy probably will have to come on. Um, but yeah, everyone apart from Luke Amos on the bench is actually quite tired as well. So it's not ideal. But it's, you know, at least we've got our squad. At least we've got what was going on at the moment. We've got a pretty strong starting 11. But let's get into the game at number one of the episode here. As I said, away against Huddersfield. And just like every other game, it's important to keep up the, the gap that we've got at the top of the table. As much freedom as we can get at the top of this table, the better. The more freedom, the better. That is absolutely where we need to be at right now. You know, we could... At the rate we're going at right now, we could end the season with, you know, a fair few games in hand and potentially guarantee the league, if not, you know, promotion, if not the league, sorry. So plenty to be playing for still, as it's still pretty early on into the season, still lots to go ahead and, uh, you know, change things. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here, but we're looking good. We're sitting pretty. Let's hopefully start off today's episode with a good, good game. And let's just stick with this initial sort of bit of play here from the center we can add white to willock who is going to keep it on i thought he was just leaving it for a second there just gonna play it inside into sam field down to johansson edge of the box have a go nichols with a good save good early start though Leco on the ball here gonna try and turn his man he's nice and quick so it's uh a lot of pace we get on this uh this wide option that Ilias doesn't really quite have Leco obviously has been making a decent impact at times off the bench you know that that burst of pace uh, later into a game, like an hour into a game, definitely comes into effect. But it'll be helpful to see, and hopefully for his sake, he can have a good little start from, uh, from you know, the first minute. It's a bit of an opportunity for him to show what he's about with a, a little bit more time on the pitch because he'll probably play, unless something drastic happens, he'll probably play the full 90 today. It makes sense if we can rest Ilias uh, to do so. Have him nice and fight and fit for the next one, you know. But Huddersfield here with plenty of the ball, starting to look decent there, but we do break it down with Laird, who's going to try and just carry this ball forward here. Plays it down into Hutton. Linden making a lovely run. Can Hutton make the pass? Not quite. That is very unfortunate. Pushing through here. Jones going to lay it back to Ward. Ward's going to have a strike. Senny Dieng with a decent and, and comfortable enough save. But they're knocking it around quite nicely. It's another five at the back. Shock. But uh, yeah, they're knocking around pretty nicely. When they get the ball, they're finding some decent spaces. Making some decent passes. We're going to bring this ball forward here with Field into Hutton. Hutton's going to turn... 
And he's going to run into the defender. Not really much going for me right now. Led, bringing this ball down the line. Willock making a nice little run ahead of him. But we are going to find... Oh, we're going to find Hutton, actually. We're not going to play it into Willock. But Willock, make that run inside, mate. Why does Willock make the run outside of him? If he'd made that run inside, I could have just laid it off. And then Willock could have had a go from there. Instead, Hutton's had extra work to do to try and then cut inside and make the space. It's frustrating that run wasn't then made central from Willock. Would have made a lot more sense. Is what it is. Hutton on the ball. Out wide here to Chrissy Willock. Back down to Linden. Linden hasn't really got the space opened up for him there. Hutton's going to have to turn. Looks outside and finds Chris. We are struggling with this five at the moment. They're defending very resolutely. We're struggling to break them down and get any clear-cut chances. I think our only chance of the game so far is the one from Johansson. Uh, and that was a bit of a sort of pot shot from the edge of the box. And as you can see at the moment, that's all we're getting. Legendary is not treating me nicely today. Half time. And it's nil-nil. And what has been a very cagey half. Most of the highlights you've seen are like almost chances. They've had, I think, a shot. And I think we've had a shot. Neither of which were like clear-cut chances. They were sort of both shots from range. It's been a little bit scrappy. It has been a little bit scrappy. I'm going to keep the team as it is. Same 11. No reason to change it yet. I'm not going to hit like a panic button or anything daft. I think we just crack on as it is, boys, and hope and pray that we can just create a bit more in the second half. We had a couple of instances like that um, in the last episode where we struggled, uh, you know, to, to really create much. And then second half, we came to life a little bit with a brace from uh, Tyler Roberts against Watford. That's the sort of game I'm thinking about here. But as I said, lots of work to do, plenty to go. And uh, we've just got to make sure that we keep them quiet and we make more for ourselves. Uh, that's that's very important. Laird, by the way, has had a phenomenal game so far. That is the first time he's really been beaten. Um, but even initially, he put in a good tackle uh, to start off that defence. But yeah, he's he's been really, really good. He's had plenty to do. He's been kept very busy on that right-hand side. But as you can see with me trying to make that attack there, I'm just struggling, struggling a lot. With an hour gone, I'm going to make two changes here. Uh, Kenneth Powell and Johansson are both going to make way. Amos and Ozzy coming on, both mainly for fitness. Johansson is definitely uh, in the middle of the park, one of our better creative players. You know, he's the league top assister. He really does offer that, uh, that you know, depth of pass in the middle of the field, which we, we kind of lose a little bit by him going off. But he is he was very, very tired, so it, it kind of needed to happen. Uh, but Amos, you know, I, I love Luki Boy in real life. I think he's a great, great player. Uh, but, you know, doesn't quite offer what Johansson does in this career mode. But... At the end of the day, if he can come on and just be fresh legs in the middle of the park, create something, sadly losing the ball in that instance, then uh, then it's better than nothing. I think what I'll do is I'll queue up some more changes. As I said, they're all tired, the bench, but they've all got, you know, 15, 20 minutes in them. Amos on the ball, inside to Linden. Going to go out wide here and find Lecco. Lecco's going to try and take it past his man, whips it in there, going to aim at Willock. He's not going to like jump and meet the ball, but it's a good win there in the middle of the park there from Sam Field. And Field now trying to knock it about a little bit, find a little bit of space. Linden, with a little bit of space, hits it over the bar. Sadly, doesn't keep the shot down, doesn't make its way on target. But we make our last three changes here. I've taken off Hutton, Willock, and I've taken off Jimmy Dunn. I've brought on Clark Salter. I've brought on Ilias Chair. And I brought on Tyler Roberts. Roberts definitely deserves a little bit of a chance um, after the last game and, and after the last episode. And uh, Hutton's really struggled to get much of a foothold or, or create too much. Dykes there with his first shot of the game as well. So I honestly could have taken either off. But I took off Hutton just because, I don't know, it feels it, it just feels like I'm getting the ball to Dykes that a little bit more often. Uh, Ilias, obviously as I said, was uh, not quite full stamina to start off with, but obviously enough stamina to come on for, for 10 or so minutes for sure. Um, and uh, the same sort of situation with, with Dunn and Clark Salter, just a little bit of rotation, a little bit of fresh legs, but not long left now. We've got, what, five minutes. We've got to be careful here. Laird, again, stepping in fantastically. I don't want to lose this one, but with three points still, you know, potentially up for grabs, it's important to try and get it. It's only, you know what, I'll, I'll let you guys sort of see how this game peters out here because I think... Last chance of the game. It's going to go their way. Hold on a second. Rhodes, if he was quicker there, could have caused a problem for us. Ozzy coming across to try and help in the middle, but leaves him a little bit of space out wide with work to do. Does go across and get it. We are going to get the ball clear, but that's going to be full time in a very, very, I'm going to say dull first game of the episode. It, it wasn't much going on. There wasn't really much to shout about. You can see the Huddersfield fans there pretty happy with the point. And to be fair, when you come up against, you know, a team at the top of the table and they're flying high, You'd probably take it. Recently, uh, QPR just played Norwich um, and I, I happily took a point away at Carrow Road, 100%. Um, tough game. Very tough game. Huddersfield defended pretty resolutely. 
frustrate them. But we are now in January. I can see quite a few emails and I worry a little bit. Some of them are going to be player record. Let's see. Okay, so Richard's record by Brighton. I kind of expected that one. I have just seen <sighs> Leeds have recalled Tyler Roberts, which is a shame because they say the situation hasn't improved. I, he, I started playing him quite a bit more. I did start playing him more. That is quite frustrating. That is quite frustrating. Eric Bunham, by the looks, has been kept, though, so we don't have to worry too much about that. Charlie Owens is back. Okay, let's have a look at our youth reports here because we've got a couple to come in. Uh, so Aidan Donnelly looks okay, but not great. Neil McLean looks good. Uh, Eamon Gallagher. So no from me. Brennan Connor, no. Uh, ben Kenny looks okay. Michael Dugan, oh, these, these don't look great, do they? I'll keep scouting Ben Ben Carney, so not Kenny. Apologies. Oh, that was the last of the one. Whoops. Well, that might not work anymore. Uh, and then pretty much all of these guys are a no. He looks okay to start off with. Luciano Abreu. I'll sign Luciano Abreu because he looks okay starting rating. But those are the youth, school, uh, youth reports ended. Uh, I'm going to have a look and see if any of our um, scout reports have come in for the players with short contracts and i'll let you know if anyone jumps out okay a couple of players have popped up on our um scout report for players with less than six months on their contracts so potential to sign up for pre-contracts the next season i'll keep those scouted i'll keep you updated if anyone else pops up between now and the next game or if anything else happens but i do think we're gonna have to try and find a striker to bring in now um and I might have to look at free agents. If I'm being brutally honest with you guys, I think we're a little bit in trouble in regards to money to spend. As I say, I don't want to spend loads of money. Alex Vega is still there, boys. Alex Vega is still there. It feels cheaty signing him up, though, because he's 78 rated on a free. I don't know. It just feels a little bit, a little bit cheaty. I'm going to hold off for now. I, I feel like I probably should pick him up, and I think lots of people will say I should. He's worth 18 million. But... I'm going to hold off for now and probably look at someone cheaper for now, like a cheap youngster to bring through that maybe goes out on loan. Ricky J. Jones could be our answer. Is he phenomenal? No, but would he be a good option off the bench late into a game? Maybe. I'll have a think, boys. I'll have a think. Naki Wells, imagine. Okay, here we are up against Doncaster in the FA Cup. I'm going to do this as a play highlights game because uh, it's the cup. We've got plenty to get on with, plenty to crack on with. As you can see, Quite a bit of rotation, not really uh, much of our first 11. Hutton, Chair are the only two uh, that are really in the starting 11. Eero Bunham's are getting a couple of minutes. Thomas on a minus six, but he specifically asked to play. So I'm going to play him, but we're going to play highlights as it's the cup. Uh, and we will crack on with that and hopefully do okay. Fingers crossed. All right, without further ado, let's jump straight into these highlights and, and see if the highlight system is any better than it was before with the glitch that we had. Uh, we start off with a counter-attack 20 minutes in, so it's been a little bit of a slower start to the game, but that's not the end of the world. See if we can bring this ball forward here. Hutton making a decent run through. How can he find him? It's not a bad attempt of a pass. Hutton is going to get there first. He's going to put it onto his left and just hit it. It's off the bar. It's not a bad effort. I think we can keep this ball alive, actually. No, we can't. The other... Other defender got the chance first. But from that, they've actually made their own attack here. 25 minutes on the clock now. Can we just stop them really from pushing and creating an early chance? It's not great. Clark Sword is going to have to step in. Does. And we win the ball and bring it away. So that's okay. And from that, again, 26 minutes in now, we bring this ball away and create our own counter-attack. Come on. Let's try and create something on this. Lovely stuff. Look at that ball to Leko. Leko going to just burst through. He's going to have to go for himself. And he does find the back of the net. Lovely finish from Jonathan Leco. Again, bouncing off of the back-to-back -back games. Got a game in the league. Now gets himself a game in the cup as well. Very happy for him because leco has been a bit of a bit part player since signing. But he's bagged himself a couple of very important goals. So I'm happy to see him on the score sheet again. Moving on into still the first half. But uh, a, a chance now for Doncaster to bring this ball forward. Let's see if we can, again, just, just try and... Squash the attack a little bit. Just, just slow it down and wait to just basically... All we've got to do is win possession, which I think we should... Oh, I was going to say we should be able to with Aussie. I didn't, and that's probably going to be a yellow card for Aussie as well. I might find out later if he got booked. But now we are in the second half, and we've got Tim on the ball, bringing this ball forward. Look at the run 
from Ilias chair, who's then just run into the defender instead of finding space for himself. Not ideal. Would have much rather he actually found himself some space. But we've got uh, Ilias on the ball again now. 70 minutes in. Got to just be careful not to make sure we don't, you know, don't uh, throw away any any silly chances. Kind of like that. But we get a free kick this time. Leko stepping over it. Is Leko my number one choice for a free kick taker? Don't know about that one. Apparently Dexter Howe's got a decent free kicks and he's left footed. So, you know what? Let's give it a go, Dexter, mate. See what you got. Give it a pop. Okay, I didn't put anywhere near a power or height on that. My bad. But we've still got about 15 minutes to go. There's still a little bit of time here, but we are yet again bringing this ball forward. And again, it is going to be Dexter Howe doing so. Inside to Hutton. Hutton going to rotate it down to Leko. Leko, can he bring this forward? No, he can't. That is a real, real shame. Seven minutes on the clock now and Doncaster with another attack. Um, it's been a little bit end-to-end. -end, just a little bit end-to-end, -end, but... I think we've definitely had the more highlights. I think that's safe to say. We've had the ball more often, which you you would like to hope and like to expect, even with the rotated team. But 1-0 full-time is where it finishes. Happy with that. Happy to just, again, see ourselves through into the round of 32, I believe, of the FA Cup. So looking decent, slowly starting to, to work our way up, which is, again, I, I didn't want to throw the cup away completely by just, like, quick-simming it. But uh, I thought I'd still give the rotation team a little bit of a chance. Um, and I'm absolutely okay with them depending on the opponent up next, probably getting a chance in the next round as well. Still nothing really in from our scouts or any of the players we're looking at. Still trying to sort of sort this third option striker situation out. We looked at some free agents. There's literally one striker free agent and it's uh, an 18 year old, like 52 rated player. So don't really have any options there. They're still looking at pre-contracts, but that doesn't really help us now. So if we're going to get a third striker, we probably need to spend and I don't want to spend much. So I've got a few people scouted We'll hopefully hear back before the end of the window. Time will tell, but let's get to Norwich. Well, before we even got to Norwich, it turns out other teams are also aware of this man's talent. Dexter Howe is going nowhere. Okay, the team is ready, fighting fit, and good to go for this next game. And it's not a five at the back, which is things you'd love to see. The full normal starting 11 for us, which is great. And interestingly enough, the man with possibly the greatest agent to ever exist in football, Chupa Moting, is at Norwich. Maybe the agent's not quite as good as we thought. No disrespect to Norwich, but, you know, it's not Bayern Munich level or, you know, the incredible teams he's played at in the past. It's mental. Regardless, let's go. Let's take on Norwich. This is the second team in England he's played for. He played for Stoke. I don't... Uh, where else did you... I don't think he's been anywhere else in England. I don't remember. Regardless, Car Road, QPR there again. For the, uh, this time in the QPR career mode, not in real life. Hopefully, at least the point. At least a point. Let's try and rack a couple up for today's episode because so far we're sitting on one. Let's go. Come on, you guys. Ball hit to Willock. Hutton continues his run, tries the shot. It's a good block from the defender. And sadly, Sam Field doesn't quite get to the loose pass. I was hoping he would, but he didn't. Now I've moved Laird well and truly out of position. And they're going to have a bit of a chance here. Nah, Ethan Laird, he's too quick. He's too good. Could be careful here. Chief promoting with the shot. Mate, there was some welly behind that, a bit of venom behind it. But thankfully, Super Senny was behind it as well. Ilias Chair running quite central here, bringing this ball nice and central inside to Hutton. Hutton lays it off to Chrissy Willock. He's going to have a shot across the goal. And Tim Krull keeping it cool with a very good save there. Punches it wide. It's not the same goalkeeper, obviously, as real life. A gun, obviously, their number one choice at the moment. And uh, proven why with some very, very good saves against us the other day. But uh, we're going to get this corner here. Going to whip it inside. Hutton tries to get to it. Goes all the way across to Chrissy Willock, who's going to have an effort from the edge of the box. I've asked for finesse. He's pulled it onto his right to hit, sort of curling towards the outside, whereas I, I wanted the finesse with his left, but it goes over the bar. Either way, it doesn't find its way into the back of the net. It's still nil-nil. Hutton on the ball now. Hutton's going to bring it down. Finds Linden, who's going to hit it first time. And a very good save there from Krull. I won't lie to you. I thought, personally, I thought... Krull had made a really poor animation and dived really late and that was going to find its way into the back of the net when it really shouldn't have done, but it didn't. It's another corner. I've aimed at Ilias for some reason in the air. Sam Field with not the best shot. We're keeping them well and truly under the cost here. We're playing some pretty good football, stopping them from really creating anything apart from the one shot from Chu promoting. We've had quite a few of our own and we're looking pretty good for it right now. Let's, uh, let's keep this pressure up, hopefully. Sam Field on the ball. Going to play into Linden. He's got a bit of space here. He's going to try the finesse. It's another very good save. I have to say, Krull at the moment is uh, living up to the level of goalkeeper that he is. He is a very, very good keeper, at least 
you know, has been over the last couple of years. I think this is definitely a level that's he's more than good enough for the championship, 100%. But now the ball to Chris Willock here. Lovely turn. Going to just try and keep the ball, play it inside to Johansson. Johansson down to Hutton. Not the best first of touches. First of touches? First touch. Uh, or not the best of first touches. I don't know what it is I'm saying anymore. Regardless, again, it's not a goal. It's still nil-nil. Ilias, by the way, I see, has a bit of a knock there. That's not ideal. Ilias on the ball. He's going to have to try and turn. Just wanted to find a little bit of space, but I couldn't quite do it. Johansson's going to get it back to him with a little bit of luck with the deflection of the midfielder. Johansson, oh, sorry, Ilias seems to have run off the, uh, the uh, injury that was there, the little knock, but uh, still going to be careful. Two minutes to go. Don't want to concede here. Uh, Max Aaron's on the ball, but it's a good tackle in the end from Dickey. We're going to bring this away with the last chance to half, potentially falling our way here. Chrissy Willock on the ball. Going to drive it a little bit wide. Referee, thankfully, is letting the game play on now. Willock, oh, it's not a good cross. I just want to keep this alive. Just keep it alive. Get it in the box, Chris, mate. Last chance to half. Falls to Hutton. And it falls just wide of the post. It's a very, very good effort. I did ask for it the way I've angled the analog stick is to go towards the post nearest us. Play it sort of glance at a cross goal. Sadly, he's hit it at the... Close post, which could have very easily found its way in. Cruel, I'm not sure if he would have got there, but sadly, it was just wide of the post. We're just, at the moment, missing chances. We're not making the most of what we've got. I think second half, we're going to stick with the same team. I don't see a reason at the moment to change things because at the moment, it's working. We just haven't converted. Cruel with some fantastic saves, and we've had one or two chances just off target, but... I think we're looking good. Defence-wise, we're looking pretty good. I have to say, um, Dickie and Dunn have both had very, very good first halves. At some point, I might take off Elias just because it's re-highlighted re that injury in, in the uh, top left. I don't know if that's because he's potentially still supposedly got a bit of a knock, but the, uh, the what's it called? The sort of the badge has gone. The sort of indication of injuries has gone. So I'm assuming he's probably okay. But worst case scenario is I will play it safe. Cheap emoting. Again, a very good tackle there from Jimmy Dunn. Very well done from uh, from him and Laird. And now Dunn just bringing this ball away. Not quite the position I want Jimmy Dunn in, but that's okay. Harvey Hutton now. Going to try and play a through ball to Dykes. Does push him a little bit wider than I'd like. So we're going to play it to Chrissy Willock. Chrissy Willock, Traveller from this kind of angle. It's off the bar. It's a very good effort indeed. Sadly, Ilias was offside, but mate, those are the kind of tra Travellers you see in Armour team. Left, right and centre. And I thought, you know what, let's be a little bit cheeky. As I say, Chrissy Willock is a, is a player with flair who can do that, who can bring that uh, into, the, into his game. So I thought, you know what, those two, bit of flair, I'll let them take the odd Traveller. I'm not going to do many with, say, for example, you know, Linden or Sam Field, for example. Probably steer clear of uh, Travellers with them. But let's, let's try and power on here. I think I'll get some subs made and ready to sort of have the last 20 minutes or so on the pitch. Powell with a little bit of space here. Going to bring it forward. Going to try and play into Linden. Does so. Into Hutton, who plays it back to Linden. Linden Dykes. It's not a good animation there from McCrawl, but it's still saved. He sort of dived the wrong way, saved it with his knees. But we've made some changes as well. Uh, I kind of forgot who I've made. So let's have a look. Leko, Clark, sort of how on Kakai on the chair. Done. Uh, I think I took... Did I take off Hutton or Dykes? I can't remember now. I think I took off Linden. Um, and uh, Laird. And again, those are mainly fitness changes um hold on oh what an effort that is that is such a good effort but it's such a good save oh that's so frustrating oh no dykes is still on i don't you know what i don't remember half the changes i made the reason of course i haven't taken dykes or hutton off i don't have a third striker there is no striker option on the bench as it stands okay chrissy willock has a go with his left spoons it it goes over we've got 20 minutes to try and get our first goal of the episode admittedly we've not conceded yet but we also not scored, and that's that's really unlike us. Got the Norwich press back a little bit here. They are knocking around the defence a little bit, and it's allowing us to put them under a little bit of pressure, trying to create a couple of chances again with not too long left. And with, I'd, I'd say I was about to say we, we've not created much. We've created loads. We've created absolutely loads. We just haven't converted, which is the problem. That the chances being made is not really a huge problem. It's it's converting those chances that we've made that's proven to be the issue but hold on a second here as we get a pretty good chance brewing there and Tim Krull I think is the problem he is having an absolute blind there he has been nothing short of fantastic today he has been the problem he has been the reason we haven't scored I think it's gonna be a goal kick uh it could be another corner actually looking at where he's pointed yeah it is let's whip this one in there Willock gets it up Hutton heads it heads it wide gonna keep this alive here surely nope it has been cleared and they've got it away and now we've got to try and win it back if we want to get one more chance. Otherwise, the last chance of the game is going to fall Norwich's way. And it's going to fall their way. 
It's four minutes to go. I could, I could win it. I could win the ball and create something, but I'm going to have to win it quickly because the clock is rapidly going down here. Good tackle there from Clark Salter. He's going to have to make another one, though, and he doesn't. Seni Dieng this time with the big save. He's not had much to do today. I think that's Dowell with the shot, and it is going to fall to a corner for Norwich in the last kicking of things, which happened in the game in real life as well. Ozzy Kakai up, gets it away. Lyndon Dykes is going to boot it, and that is surely going to be all she wrote. That is another... 0-0 draw. As I say, it doesn't happen often, but it's happened today and it's happened twice. No goals either way. Two games in, zero goals scored. Don't know where the shooting boots have gone, boys, but we're not wearing them. Well, it's been a slow, slow start for us at the moment. You can see players are being, you know, complimented on how well they're doing, but the 12-point lead that we had at the start of the episode has dropped to an 8-point lead. Burnley winning all their games that we're drawing at the moment. We were not having it. We had three draws all season and we've had two this episode so far. So I think the Sheffield United one will be the final episode or final game of the episode today, but we've got some things to look through. Okay, sadly, there's actually not really much to show with our transfers. No one that I'm actually looking to pick up right now has come through. A couple of the players have been suggested for me to scout, but none of which I can actually pick up because they're either out on loan at clubs or clubs that like players aren't, sorry the clubs aren't willing to sell the players um or they're just not what we need right now so struggling a little bit i guess i'll see you at sheffield united okay another five at the back and uh our final chance today to come away from a game with a win um which doesn't feel good to say because so far haven't had any haven't haven't been beaten which is obviously good still an unbeaten episode as it stands but a winless episode as well which in itself is a kick in the teeth so we're going to go into this one home game home form hopefully we can come away with something today and find a very important three points it, and I, again I know I say it all the time pretty much every game but it is the case today it really really is the case today um, we need to make sure that we do come away with something um, so hopefully we can do just that let's fingers crossed take this game to the blades and uh, put the blades to the sword let's find out come on you was. Oh, this is a, oh, that's a really nice bit of play, I have to say. Some lovely one-touch football from Sheffield United. That really could have been a problem for us. But thankfully, we did come away with it with an, a nice interception from, I think it was Jimmy Dunn. And we kind of waste our chance a little bit here. Can we maybe just try a nice bit of pressure? Wasn't quite enough. Ilias Chair bringing this ball forward. Going to try a shot from range against Fodderingham. And apparently, apparently all it took was an audacious effort for no reason from Ilias Chair. Apparently, that's all it took. Wes Foddering and Big Wes, absolutely no man's land. It is, a, it is a beautiful strike from Ilias Chair. How far out was that? Because that was a truly fantastic strike. It's a 0% expected goal. Doesn't tell me the range, but the finish is just, it speaks for itself. Ilias Chair, mate, with potentially the goal of the season. I mean, as far as first goals of the episodes go, it was definitely worth waiting for. Would have liked it to have happened in the first game or two, though. But regardless, Ilias with a lovely, lovely goal. Fair play, mate. Take a bow. Something, actually, while I think about it, I don't think I mentioned, is uh, Johansson uh, misses the game today. Uh, Dexter Howe starting. Johansson was quite tired. And I thought, you know what? Howe's been pretty good when I played him. I'll start him. So that I didn't actually mention that at all in the build-up to the game. But it's 1-0. Ilias Chair going to whip this ball in the box. Aims to the far post. Foddering comes out and claims that one. Decided to go for that one a little bit more than he did the shot. But uh, it was it was comfortable in the end from uh, from Fodderingham. Going to play this ball up here. Lovely pass there from Dickey into Dykes. And Dykes now sees the run from Hutton. Hutton can't quite get up there uh, and, and get the uh, get the header. But Howe has headed it back down to him. And he's going to try the strike. Sort of powers it into the ground a little bit. Plays that bottom left-hand corner. But Fodderingham got well, uh, well down to his left. And uh, makes a very good save in the end. But we're looking pretty good right now. The five at the back. I'm not saying it's 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 not causing its problems, but we're finding chances in this five at the back more than we have uh, in the five at the back at the start of the game and at the start of the uh, episode. Sorry, maybe not as many chances as we did against Norwich. The the difference between playing a four is very very evident. But uh, yeah, I think we're doing pretty good right now. First half just about to come to an end. I, okay, I didn't quite mean straight away. Yeah, I kind of expected a minute, but never mind. It is going to be half time, And uh, yeah, we've got our first goal of the episode. And what a goal it was as well. Ilias Chair, it was worth the wait. It was well and truly worth the wait. But again, would have been nice to have maybe, just maybe, 
had a couple more moments like that in the episode today, but Lyndon getting pretty tired. I feel like I might have to sub him off. You can see Albert Adoma is our new player on the bench. Can't play striker, but uh, Leko can. So the plan will be at some point, Leko will come on, Adoma will come on, and it's a wide player if we need that. But Dykes will have to part ways uh, at some point in the second half. I won't leave it too late, but I'll give him a chance to get his goal. He is the league top goal scorer. I think he'd be pretty miffed coming off at halftime. So I think it makes sense to keep him on for a little bit longer, even if I just give him to like the 60th minute, just to try and get something. Okay, well, if you're going to do that, Linda, I'll take you off now, buddy. But uh, just to try and get something. But yeah, second half, hopefully more of the same. They haven't threatened too much. I can't think of a shot that they've had. They had a nice little starting uh, bit earlier where they, they played some lovely tiki-taka, but, but um, they haven't threatened Senny so far that I can think of. Good tackle there from Rob Dickey. I have to say, our defence today has been absolutely phenomenal. The attackers obviously haven't had the best of times, but the defence has been phenomenal and this is why I kept Linden on. This is why I kept Linden on. You get one, fantastic. We've walked through them and we've got the second and I would absolutely love to see Linden Dykes do a backflip. Linden, mate, there's your challenge. Recreate that celebration, please, and thank you. Big Linden, mate. You'd love to see it. Again, this is what, I think that's his 18th goal this season, maybe. It might even be more than that. He's been nothing short of phenomenal. And in real life, he's really started to find the goal scoring form as well. Hopefully, he can keep up with that. Get himself another brace soon as well. Obviously, a tough game against West Brom uh, on the day that this is actually being uploaded. Uh, that game is happening. But big Linda, mate, finding the back of the net, which we've come to expect from him now. I'll get the changes ready and Linden will be one of them. Let's give him a rest now. Linden on the ball, going to play it into Hutton and Hutton now is just going to burst away from the defenders. John Egan gets across very well, I have to say. Basham helping him out there as well. But the two of them doing enough to stop us from really pushing through there. That could have been a very good chance for a second because Hutton's not rapid, but he's he's not slow, you know. So good good uh, catching up from the, uh, the centre-backs. But hold on a second. Let's not worry about the subs just now. Offside. Thank God for that. So the change I made, Dykes off for Lecco, as I mentioned, and Field off for Amos. Going to make a couple more, though, because, again, rotation. Uh, we're going to take off Pal and bring on, not Albert Adoma, uh, we're going to bring on Ozzy Kakai. Uh, good little bit of rotation. Ilias is going to make way for Albert Adoma. Uncle Albert, you love to see it. Uh, and I'm going to take off Dickey. He's a little bit tighter than Clark Salter, so Clark Salter will make ways. Albert Adoma comes on with the bloody armband as well. It is things you love to see, boys. Old Albert Adoma, mate. Cheeky boy. Those are the changes. Not too long left. 15 or so on the clock. But uh, yeah, let's see if we can... Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm confident for the for the win now. The clean sheet is still huge, of course. Uh, Amos thinks he's Ilias chair, by the way. Amos thinks he's Ilias... Amos was very nearly Ilias chair, by the way. That better not be long term. That was a late tackle, by the way, from Brewster. It's a straight red. It's a straight red. I thought the... F okay, he's up and walking. That's good. I, I thought it was going to be given as, as like a yellow card. That was a bad tackle, to be fair. Rian Brewster going straight off the pitch. Billy Sharp coming on for Robinson. Robinson the mug, that is. Billy Sharp alike. But, uh, mate, fair enough. That was... Uh, I was not expecting the red card there. We're going to put some real power on this, by the way. Hutton. It is on target, but it's straight at Fodderingham. Good save. But yeah, 10 minutes to go. And Sheffield United down to 10 men. Albert Adoma on the ball. Inside to Jonathan Lecco. Jonathan Lecco hits it wide. It does go wide of the post. The space in that back four seems a little bit noticeable. Bogle going off for... I didn't see who that was, actually. But Bogle parting ways now. I'm fairly sure... Have they gone to a back four? I'm not sure what they've gone to. They might have gone to a three. I'm not even sure what's going on now. Got to be careful here. Osborne plays a very good teasing cross and that has gone through, through Senny Dieng's legs. Of all the chances that he concedes, that's that's one that I expected him to stop there. I'm fairly sure he's been nutmegged. Um, again, that's the player. I didn't see who it was who came on. But Osborne, that, that there, by the way, is a beautiful cross. Really is good. It's oh, that's, that's so unfortunate. Beating at his close post and it's through his legs as well. Uh, it's Kadra. Okay, so Kadra comes on. Kadra got grey hair? Don't think he does. But regardless, it's three minutes ago, I said I was confident on the win and I wanted a clean sheet. We didn't get the clean sheet. Now we've got to make sure we get the win, boys. Laird down the line here to Chrissy Willock. Look at the space that lecco has got. This change of formation has just opened them up in the defence and maybe should have done better there. But, mate, their defence is wide open with their changes because that 10 men... Because they're down to 10. Willock's going to whip this in there. It's going to go to Laird. Laird's not quite going to win it. But Willock, 
Great first touch there. He's going to ping it on his left. It's going to go over the bar. But we do get our first win in the last game of the episode. Still unbeaten. Sadly, the, uh, the uh, what's it called? The clean sheets were broken today. We didn't get our final clean sheet of the uh, episode. But we did get the three points that we desperately, desperately needed. And uh, yeah, okay, I feel a little bit better about today. Five from nine is not great. But thankfully, still unbeaten in that episode. Okay, well, that is going to be the final game in the episode. A couple of big transfers going through here. And here, just to finish off, a couple of players that I have been scouting. So Rafael Guzzo, sadly, not going to live up to the uh, expectation of the rating he was potentially going to be. Texiera, again, a little bit lower rated than I'd like to see. Andre Almeida, 74 rated, 32 years of age. It would be somebody for next season. This is on a pre-contract. By the time next season starts, I imagine he'd be about 72 rated. So I don't think it's worth it, which is a real, real shame. But somebody else I'm scouting to potentially look to pick up is Danny Loder. Bring him back to the UK, bring him back into English football and maybe be another option for us off the bench. The issue with that is I don't think they're willing to sell him. So I'd have to pay the 6.8. And if that's the case, it's going to be a no from me. If I can maybe loan him to the end of the season, that could be an option though. But this is your guys' last chance to have an impact on what we have signing-wise for the end of the uh, the January transfer window. I'm giving you guys this last chance to have a say in who we could potentially pick up. As I said to you guys, I'm not going to be spending that much money. We've got seven mil. I don't want to spend much of it because at the moment we are well and truly uh, in, uh, in a loss uh, for this season. 2.7 mil down. I'm going to set the budget at 4 million. I'm not going to spend more than that across all the signings that we make. And that includes pre-contracts. So this is your last chance to have a say into what we do and if we do sign anyone. But boys, thank you so much for watching. Really do hope you guys are enjoying the series. And if you are, then please do a like on the video, support me, the video, the channel, and the series out a whole bunch. If you're new, hit the sub button and turn notifications on to be told anytime we upload a video. If you want to watch us on our live streams, it's Hersey Games over on Twitch and on TikTok. I stream both at the same time. Links to both are down below. And while they're down there, make sure you show some love to our channel sponsors. Thank you again for supporting the channel. But that's it from me. Thank you for watching. I've been Tom. You guys have been awesome. And I'll see you soon. Look after us. And of course, what? wash your hands nah, in a bit. Slap bald head, it'll probably hurt me. Bang top bins, it'll probably hurt you. Ginger, streamer, platform, YouTube. Drop a name in the chat, we'll say hello. Entertain, yeah, you already know. Capital H, yeah, I'm a really slow. Hursty Games, yeah, you already know.